Hi, this is Dr. John Bergduff. In this video, we're going to explore the quadratic formula. The quadratic formula gives us one of four methods that are available for solving quadratic equations. Just as a reminder, an, a quadratic equation is any equation that can be written in this form right here. Uh, AX squared plus BX plus C equals zero where the a, b, and c are real numbers, and the number a cannot be equal to zero. Uh, the key component of a quadratic equation is the x squared term in there. This method tells you that you can actually solve one of these quadratic equations by just plugging into a formula. And this is it. It's very, very famous. And actually, although there's really not very many things you have to memorize in college algebra, this is one thing you absolutely want to memorize. This gives you a method that can be used on any quadratic equation, but it is especially important if you happen to have a quadratic expression, a trinomial, that does not factor, so you can't use the factoring method. So. Um, this, if you look at this, it may look like, oh, that's going to be really hard to remember. There's actually a song that helps you remember the quadratic formula. I'm going to sing it for you, and uh, let you know, and then you tell me what you think. So it goes like this: x is equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Now you may think, okay, that's kind of silly. I don't really think I want to learn that, but um, if it helps, good for you. You may find yourself singing it to yourself when you take your next test. So let's just jump right in and see what, how this uh, formula works and what you do with it. So here's an example. Here's um, an equation, a quadratic equation, and if you look at the polynomial for a few minutes, you'll realize that you can't get it to factor. You can't find two numbers whose product is 1 and whose sum is 7. That just isn't going to work. So the way the formula works is you have to identify what the coefficients are, the a, the b, and the c, and I'm going to write that down. So in this formula, the a represents the coefficient of the x squared term. With no uh, obvious coefficient in front of the x squared, that's understood to be a 1. b is the coefficient of the x term, so that would be a 7. And c is the constant, so that would be 1. And what you literally do is you take these numbers and plug them into that formula. Let's see what happens. So we would say that x is equal to negative b, b is 7, plus or minus the square root of b, that's 7 again, minus 7 uh, squared minus 4 times a times c. a and c are both 1, and all of that is divided by 2 times 1 because that's a. So let's flip this over to the next page and, and do this calculation and see where it takes us. So I'm just going to copy for a minute. We would have, again, x is equal to negative 7 plus or minus the square root, principal square root, 7 squared minus 4 times 1 times 1 all over 2 times 1. All right. We work under the radical first as if the radicand was more or less in parentheses. And by order of operations, we would first um, apply the exponent. 7 squared is 49. And we might as well, while we're at it, uh, multiply the 4 times 1 times 1, which is 4. 2 times 1 in the denominator. And then we can do the subtraction, which is no problem. 49 minus 4 is 45. Now, any radical should be simplified, so we look to see if the radicand can be factored into a perfect square and a leftover, and it certainly can. The 45 can be written as, and just splitting up the radical as we go, principal square root of 9, principal square root of 5, 9 times 5, all over 2, and then we would be able to simplify the principal square root of 9, 
nothing else simplifies. Now notice that with the plus and the minus, we're really implying that there are two solutions. Um, if you want to be really meticulous about it, when you write your solution set, you can write them as two separate solutions. One of them would be negative 7 plus 3 times the principal square root of 5 over 2. And the other one would be negative 7 minus 3 times the principal square root of 5 over 2. But, and, and you may see in my math lab or some other forms of work that you're using that they may ask you to list those separately. There's really nothing that says that you can't write them combined with the plus or minus. So in general, unless a particular software or a set of instructions on a test says otherwise, you could write the solution set either one of these ways. That's the quadratic formula. You just plug things in. Let's do another example. And again, the key thing that you start with is you identify what the A, the B, and the C are. Now, you may remember that when I had, when I was defining the uh, quadratic equation, formula at the beginning, I said the equation needed to be written in this form. Notice the zero has to be on one side. So before you can use the quadratic formula, you may have to subtract or add something to both sides so that one side is zero. In this case, subtract 15 from both sides. You have to do that first. Then you can identify your A, which is 8, your B, which is 14, and include any negative signs in the values of A, B, and C. So C would be negative 15. The formula again, uh, in case we need to write it down, I'm going to sing it one more time. X is, X is equal to negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. Plugging in, negative B would be negative 14 plus or minus the square root of, principal square root of, 14 squared minus 4 times A is 8, C is negative 15. Watch the negative signs super carefully here. And in the denominator, the A is 8. So we would have X is equal to negative 14 plus or minus. Let's work under the radical. May need a calculator for some of this. That's okay. 14 squared is 196. Um, negative 4 times 8 times negative 15, that's going to be a positive. So negative times a negative is a positive, and the 4 times the 8 times the 15 is 480. Underneath, down there in the denominator, 2 times 8 is 16. So make sure you understand where everything got plugged in and how we've simplified that so far. What our next step will simply be to add the two quantities in the radicand. So I'm going to go on to another page and do that. Uh, we had the numbers 196 plus 480. This was a negative 14 plus or minus principal square root. Uh, that would give you a 676. And in the denominator, we had a 16. Now again, radicals need to be simplified. Um, what I always do first is just sort of in desperation, especially when the radicand gets that large, I say, oh, wouldn't that be nice if that just happened to be a perfect square? Uh, if not, then I'll have to factor it, but that would just be so lucky. This time we are lucky. Uh, on your calculator, you can find the square root of 676. Principal square root of 676 turns out to be 26. So negative 14 plus or minus 26 over 16. This time the radical goes away. It didn't go away on the first one. Uh, I'll tell you what that signifies in a minute. If the radical does go away, it is best to think about the two separate solutions that you get, whether you have the plus sign or the minus sign in the numerator. So I'm going to look at this as two separate solutions, which they are. Negative 14 plus 26 over 16. And negative 14 minus 26 
over 16. I may have said 14 in the denominator there, but uh, it's 16. Uh, then we do some arithmetic. Negative 14 plus 26 is 12. So 12 over 16 is one solution. And the other solution, negative 14 minus 26 is negative 40 over 16. Both of these simplify. Uh, the 12 is 3 times 4. The 16 is 4 times 4. So the 4's divide out. Leave you with 3 fourths. And over here, we can do even better. The negative 40 is 5 times 8. The 16 is 2 times 8. And the 8's divide out. So if I can slide this up here in the corner, my solution set consists of 3 fourths and negative 5 halves. And the quadratic formula made that all possible for me. Now, if you get rational solutions, in other words, if the radical goes away, like it does here, that is your clue that the original polynomial that we had would have factored. Now, uh, just as a reminder of what our original equation was, this was the example two we were looking at. We were solving um, 8x squared plus 14x equal 15. Getting a zero on one side is necessary whether you're factoring or using the quadratic uh, formula. Now you may look at that and realize that it's a little bit hard to factor. Um, so one nice thing about the quadratic formula is that it is always available to you. If you can't figure out, even if a polynomial does factor but you can't figure it out, maybe on a test you're a little stressed out, the quadratic formula will work. However, if you had noticed that this polynomial does factor, and it factors like this, 4x minus 3 times 2x plus 5, Check that by the FOIL rule to make sure that that agrees. 4x times 2x is 8x squared. 4x times 5x is 20x minus, product of the inside terms, minus 6x. 20x minus 6x is 14x. And minus 3 times 5 is negative 15. So that does factor, which means you could have set each factor equal to 0. This one would give you 4x is equal to 3, or x is equal to 3 fourths. This would give you 2x is equal to negative 5, or x is equal to negative 5 halves. The solution set is 3 fourths and negative 5 halves. And if you look back, yes, that's exactly what we got by the quadratic formula. If you notice that the, that the polynomial does factor, notice how much shorter this is and how you're not dealing with numbers that are quite so huge. But the quadratic formula is our friend, both if the polynomial doesn't factor and if you have a polynomial that does factor, but you just don't see how to do it. So, hope that helps. Remember the song. Sing it to yourself when you take your next test.